when's the last time your company did something good for others? I code artificial intelligence for a living, and sometimes I help companies automate thousands of hours every single year. And in the coming time, AI developers will automate millions of man hours. In fact, a study done by McKinsey estimates that within the next 10 years, one third of all jobs currently in the world will be replaced by AI, and 17 trillion US dollars will be added to the world GDP. So you can say, just like the previous decade was shaped by internet entrepreneurship that disrupted value change, the next decade will be shaped by AI. In 2013, I quit my math studies and started my first company. I worked really hard, and 80 hours every week, and a few years later, I sold my company. Um, I'm one of those entrepreneurs that built a valuable company and sold it. I'm far from the only one. The last decade, many entrepreneurs sold the company, and we've been hailed as the ones generating the financial boom of the last decade. What I want to tell you today is how that might not be the case. Um, what if the last decade had been a financial bust? How many companies do you think would have been built? I dare say that it is easy to build a company in a global economy growing at 4 or 5% annually. So, we are at a new dawn. We're looking into a, a decade, 17 trillion US dollars to the global GDP, coming out of a very profitable decade. And let's not forget the decade before that of financial bust globally. So it's fascinating for me, the question of what value actually is. Is value only profit? Can companies just generate profit? Or can we do more than that? If we look at psychology, psychology also talks about the value of giving. It can inspire others to do the same. It generates happiness not just in the receiver, but also the giver. And lastly, giving to others generates humility, appreciation, thankfulness, gratitude, and all these things that we value in our society. If we look at the last decade that's been very profitable, we've also seen companies cheating in taxes, lying about their emission numbers, protecting their own revenue stream by undermining democratic processes. And I wonder if this is how companies are supposed to act in one of the most profitable decades of the century. So, I have a crazy idea. What if companies donated one day a week for good causes? Helping hospitals, other kinds of volunteers. And I know that it's a crazy idea because companies exist to generate profit, right? In the next few minutes, I hope to convince you why a company should actually generate more than that. This is a slide from uh, The Economist. It's the OECD countries. It's the most economically developed countries in the world. And on the x-axis, you see countries by how long they work. So out here, you have some countries that work a lot every week. And out here, you have some countries that don't work so much every week. On the other scale, we have countries that are in the top, very productive for every hour they work. And at the bottom, countries that are not so productive. And look at the correlation. We can see countries, the more they work, it seems that they get less productive. An example of a country out here is South Korea. In the other end, we have countries that are very profitable for every hour worked. That's example Germany. And this chart shows that more work does not lead to more profit. So this is the first observation I want to share with you. The next observation is a study made from University of Central Florida that shows how people react when they work next to artificial intelligence. And at first, you're really happy because it's taking your boring jobs away from you, so you can do something that's nice. And then the computer gets smarter and smarter and smarter than you, so it also takes away some of those parts of your jobs that you really liked. And it turns out eventually everyone gets stressed from working next to a machine like that. We are at a point now where AI will, we will work next to it, all of us, and that raises the question of why we should keep working longer and longer and not just automate. So, on one hand, we have this OECD study. 
On the other hand, we have the study made from University of Central Florida. On one hand, longer work does not lead to more productivity. On the other hand, working next to AI will make you stressed. So, put them together. Why not work more, sorry, work less, and automate more? Um, this is what we do at my company. Four days a week, we help other companies with AI and how to implement it. And one day a week, we help hospitals, organizations like that. For that one day a week, are we making any money? No. Are we keeping our shareholders happy? No. Are we okay with that? Yeah, we are actually very proud of it. I understand that after this talk, we can't all go out and do the same thing. And this is why I want to leave you with a historical fact. In 1869, the U.S. government mandated a 40-hour work week for all its employees. For those of you in doubt, it re they reduced the work. They didn't up it to 40 hours a week. Um, and the Ford Motor Company did the same thing, only they did it 57 years later. And that was at a point when the U.S. government had already done it for 57 years. The assembly line had been invented, and the formation of labor unions was present in every single facility of Ford. So it takes an entire generation for a change to come about in the labor market. We are at a new inflection point now. Company greed has gone on for too long. More work will not lead to more productivity. And AI is going to change the labor market. It might take an entire generation. But if we think that our kids should spend their work to generate more than shareholder value, now is the time to start changing that. Thank you.